right. Yep, all right. Welcome to Book Club for Movies, everybody, for the week of April 25th. I'm Ryan Miller and Uncharted himself, Matt Emberg. I'm charted. You can't say I'm not. You don't have any proof. That's right. He's charted. I just charted. I know you did. On Book Club for Movies, where we watch one movie a week, and if you did the same, you can find us at podcast at bookclubformovies.com or Facebook and Twitter or Patreon, where you will see a recent post that I haven't done yet, but uh, time is a flat circle? Sure. And regardless, there's a billion other posts. Okay, there's not a billion yet, but we're working on a billion, and there's quite a few at this point. We'll get there. To provide a, a value of sorts. Yeah. A billion dollars worth of value. Yes. You've heard it here. Sign up for Patreon. It's worth a billion dollars. And none of the tiers cost that much, actually. No, not at all. So check but it out. But if you give us a billion dollars, our tiers will cost that much. Yeah. The funny thing is, I think if you actually pledge a billion dollars, it'll get you the $100 tier and you can talk to us for an hour, basically. And that's, <laughs> so, but that's And that's it. And that's honestly still worth it. Kind of worth it. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's so very worth it. Check out the Patreon. Today, this week, uh, all of the above, we're doing Uncharted. I don't know what we maybe said we were doing last time, uh, given on how that edit comes out, because I haven't edited that show yet either. Uh, but we decided to do Uncharted because we also recorded that last show a mere two days ago. So with turnarounds like these, who needs enemies? <laughs> <laughs> who needs see if you'd said enemas it also would have worked because well, Turner. Poop. i also didn't want to ask who needs an enema because <laughs> well the uh, answer is this town needs an enema <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right matt so do you have a synopsis for uncharted the movie we are doing this week of course i have an uncharted synopsis for uncharted it's uncharted Beautiful. it's an hour and 56 minutes written by art markham and matt holloway directed by ruben fleischer starring tom holland mark Wahlberg, antonio banderas sofia ali and tati gabriel here is your book club for movie synopsis for uncharted <laughs> <laughs> i do in my mind you just get stuck in that loop where you say this is the synopsis for uncharted give the cast and then say here's the synopsis for uncharted and then go into the cast again and then it just <laughs> we do that for 60 minutes yeah. uh, okay here okay. we go wet or dry treasure hunter sully sullivan combines forces with streetwise nathan drake for an adventure across continents in search of magellan's gold oh is that what that uh, oh that's right i do remember now there was a, a mention of magellan the entire the movie, <laughs> he mentions it like three times. <laughs> it's like the beginning of the movie. They're like, hey, look, this is where Magellan went. And then they find the map. He's like, hey, that's where Magellan went. And then they get the map again. He goes, here's where Magellan went. I'm joking <laughs> halfway. You're not wrong. This this Matt. treasure is both wet and dry. Did you did you think about that? Yes, thank you also. I appreciate the uh, comedy bang bang shout out. Or the, what's that character's name? It's... I don't remember what the name is, He's, yeah. uh, it, but it's the uh, the Bill Paxton. It is. <laughs> it's Pel Paul F. Tompkins' Bill Paxton character that only searches for wet treasures. Check it out. Uh, Matt, so uh, normally at this point, I talk a little bit about the history of whatever movie we're going into. And honestly, after watching this film, I was like, I bet there's not that much to talk about with this thing, uh, given how new it is and all this stuff. And I think I was forgetting... Maybe the troubled history of this. Yeah. And, and it is a little interesting. So I feel like because also it, it brings into focus the movie we could have got or movies we could have got, I think, over time. Because this thing was originally announced in 2008. With so, Mark Wahlberg. Yes. Well, okay, that as is also funny. Nathan yeah. Drake. It's gotten to the point. I'm going to interrupt it because this is a thing. I mentioned this to Beth as soon as we turned this on. I went, okay, just so you know, this movie has been in production, like in development hell, since like 2010. Mark Wahlberg was attached to this movie all the way back then to play the part Tom Holland is playing. No matter how this movie sets itself up, He's still not old enough to play the guy he's supposed to be playing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is, that was the one thing I remembered and it is the only example I can think of where an actor has literally aged out of the part he was attached to and come back as the, because, so, okay, I have played the first 
Uncharted. I haven't played the rest. I bought the the collection, the disc whatever. that comes with like I think three all the trilogy or something like that for PS4, and then I loaned it out after I played the first one. So I haven't got to the rest of them. I will. I still want to. I put it on easy like story difficulty, and I just kind of play through the things, and it's and it's great. It's fine. Uh, so I don't have that much experience, but I did know of obviously Nathan Drake and Sully, who is the older character in those games. You know, so yes that Mark Wahlberg aged out of Nathan Drake to Sully in the time this movie was produced is singular. As far as I can remember, <laughs> I cannot think of another example of that. But here are some other milestones along the way, right? So shortly after it was announced, David O. Russell did get attached to write and direct. I remember that. And yeah. apparently got far enough along that in interviews, Mark Wahlberg would comment on stuff. And he has said... Uh, quote, I'm obviously in whatever David wants to do, but the idea of it is so off the charts. Robert De Niro being my father, Joe Pesci being my uncle, it's not going to be the watered down version. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Russell leaves for Silver Linings Playbook. Neil Berger uh, of, of The Illusionist fame, which I haven't watched. Oh, I thought in... you meant, I thought it was of the, of the ham fame. <laughs> there we now, go the, yeah. yep okay uh, no he did the the, the illusionist uh, he comes on and is tasked with rewriting the script so at that point I think the actors anybody that was attached is kind of free and clear I'm sure Wahlberg actually could have backed out at any point along the way so that's also just amazing to me that he stuck around long enough to uh, not only age out but stay with the thing Neil Berger leaves to go d do Divergent, which is kind of a fine series of films. Actually, if you haven't watched it, it's teeny weeny, whatever. It's fun. Sure. <laughs> and the Wibberleys are hired to write the thing, which have done such movies as Bad Boys 2, Charlie's Angels, Full Throttle, and of course, most notably, National Treasure. So I can see what they were thinking. Doesn't really matter because they also... Uh, leave and at this point which isn't honestly that long into this story I feel like the movie is coming to get a reputation because Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg are both on record as saying that they were approached to write it and declined the offer uh, Chris Pratt was approached to do Nathan Drake and declined so apart from being in development hell or maybe this is development hell it seems like people are distancing themselves from the project and obviously during all this time it's not like this is the first thing on everybody's list and people are dropping like flies like development hell to me also means that it's kind of on the back burner in a number of ways and who knows who's talking about what you know like none, none of the meetings had about this film were probably emergency meetings you know like <laughs> they were what are you doing when you'll be in town okay whatever no i mean it, this goes this kind of uh I, my memory of this also goes back to um uh, and which well i guess we'll get into that but my memory also goes back to the the thing that um the, they they were saying about the last of us which is they they didn't want to just rush everything they wanted it to be just right and get it all settled and figured out and and that's why the last of us took so long to get going and now that's coming is yeah the tv show and so i i, I kind of got that feeling from sony like playstation studios because that's who now uh ended up one of the one of the many many production companies involved in this movie by the way for a big budget movie i i swear you heart you don't see that many names in front of sure. columbia pictures <laughs> presents there's like 50 of them yeah. uh like this felt like it's like okay great are, are we, am i watching something that was developed for youtube what's happening right am now? am i watching something that was developed by many different studios and people in a i don't know committee like fashion yeah you might ask yourself that at some point I, in fact i might <laughs> uh david guggenheim guggenheim sorry david guggenheim <laughs> gets on board to write and uh, he's done Safe House, uh, Stolen, and Christmas Chronicles. So all the big ones. Uh, <laughs> and Seth Gordon to direct, who did Horrible Bosses. Uh, but he ends up leaving to do Baywatch. So That's a wash. Uh, Guggenheim's script was actually the one that got leaked when the Sony hack happened. Okay. So, so that's the one that's kind of out there that you can kind of look up, I guess, if you want. Uh, but not even a year later, uh, Joe Carnahan 
was brought on to start reworking parts of it and do a draft. Yeah. <laughs> you're, now you're thinking of the Joe Carnahan Uncharted movie that you might have been able to get for, for a hot second there. Uh, it, w- let me tell you who was going to direct it. Sean Levy. But he left to do a uh, free guy. Thank goodness, actually. Uh, in 2017, we finally get Tom Holland attached. And I feel like maybe this is where the version that we saw starts coming into focus. Even though... We still had to go through uh, Rafe Judkins, who started doing parts of the script. He did uh, Chuck and some Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff uh, and stuck around long enough to get his name on the credits. So I feel like that says something. None of the other people I have mentioned I ended up on the final credits. But we still go through Dan Trachtenberg, did 10 Cloverfield Lane as mm-hmm. director, uh, drops Travis Knight, who did Kubo and the Two Strings, actually pretty cool, uh, and Bumblebee, which is not as good as Kubo, but <laughs> you loved it. <laughs> you, oh, you, sure. You, you didn't love it. I didn't. Uh, until we finally get to Ruben Fleischer, who directed this movie that we're going to talk about today after directing such other things as Zombieland. Zombieland. Yeah, and Venom. So V-Dom. How interesting is that, right? It is lunacy in terms of what this movie again and you know this is a movie this is a a thing too where i wa- i i hear what you're saying and all i think about is why could we not have had this trouble when the first resident evil was being made instead of them going hey paul w s anderson <laughs> that's fine because why do any decisions begin and end with Paul W. S. Anderson? You're saying why is that not first draft thinking for everybody? Yeah, involved never, here? never let him do it. Uh, that's number one. <laughs> but but what it, what kills me and what it, this is, it's like they have to make this stuff so much harder than it needs to be, right? Like like this story that they want to tell, it's not a hard story to tell. It's been told a hundred times over. Plus, you have a game with which you can go ahead and base your tail off of, right? I I just, it, I, again, it, it's, why is this so hard? What was so difficult about, especially the movie that we got? This movie that we got, I mean, yeah, no, it feels like a movie by committee. It feels like it was about 40 different movies clamored, clammed into one. You know, it was just... Okay, we're gonna take all of our favorite set pieces that have been in any that have been in our video games. Uh, we're gonna remix this or that, and <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Un- <laughs> we, we've the the na- here, but just remember, call him <laughs> Nathan Drake, not Nicolas Cage. His name in National Treasure or Indiana Jones or oh wait, but we're actually I'm sorry, oh, no, we gotta remember. We gotta we gotta call they out name Indiana drop Jones. Him. Yeah, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, that's like number one. Do not bring that up. We're already thinking about it, and now you're just reminding us that yeah. And it's not like they go nuts. They they if they would have started talking about like Tomb Raider or something, it would have been like okay, somebody's like obviously just like throwing up their hands at this point. But they don't even do that. It's just like yeah, let's mention Indiana Jones. Don't like yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> to answer your question though about. Why is it so hard? It's funny because some of the criticism I hear about why this movie even exists is like, well, man, Uncharted is already based on like Indiana Jones and and this and that. Like, it it seems like the snake eating its own tail at some point. Like now we've got a a game based on a movie based on a game based on, you know, and I don't necessarily like I won't disqualify anything for that, really. Like, especially (laughs) after Crystal Skull, when it became apparent that. Like, we still want the Indiana Jones movie. We just want a good one. You know, I, I think there's still, like, I like a good adventure like that. You know, of like, co- absolutely. I, I have no problem with that movie existing and somebody trying to do that movie again. Totally no, into I think, it. I think the time is right. They're fun anyway. Like, let's do it. That's fine. So I don't, I guess, yes, know why it's so hard. Maybe here they just wanted to get it out. You know, maybe, maybe. They're like, well, we know Uncharted 2 is the best Uncharted, which I, I know some of the recent ones got, got quite a bit of buzz and look all that much better. But you always hear about Uncharted 2 being the best Uncharted. Maybe they're just like, well, let's get Uncharted 1 out of the way. Let's get the the Uncharted 1 video game movie version out of the way and, and so we can get to Uncharted 2. Because 
I could see a sequel to this being a lot better. Man, I'm not really. No, no, no. I, there's no, no bar there, really. But I could see the sequel actually being something really better. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay. <laughs> so let's, let's, I don't know if everybody yeah, after watching this might have the same opinion, but Hey, what can I say? Uh, so number one, I, I, now I, I'm not going to say the line. I'm not going to, re- I'm not going to repeat the full line, but anybody, if, do you remember? And this again comes in, this will make sense. We just recently watched the movie, bring it on. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, love that movie. Still, still good. Great. 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 There's the bit with uh, the his, the character's name is Sparky Palastri. He's the uh, the guy they call in to teach them how to do a dance that we then later finds out he did. He taught like all the schools and they all are doing the exact same dance. So <laughs> so he has a line. And I'm not going to repeat the whole thing because, you know, it's it goes beyond, uh, you, you know, technically, I guess you could say it. But he he says that cheerleaders are dancers who have gone the 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 R word for, for, for lack of a better term. I don't, I don't even special needs. The bad. Oh. The, 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 yeah. That's what he calls cheerleaders. He you says can, cheerleaders. It's, it's a quote from the movie, man. You can, you can. Well, okay. Well, I mean, I, I'll I, leave it up to you if you want to actually say it, but yeah, that's. I, I, I'm trying not to say it even in the quote, but, but, well, but you know I, the I'm words. trying so, to get it on tape so I can reproduce something that's even worse. That's obviously in your own voice. Yeah. So me... This is, this is that whole, I, you're going to somehow blame, like say I'm, I'm, I'm supporting the hatred of Jews now or something, <laughs> isn't it? Like, I, I know how this goes. Okay. Elon. Um, but Beth, Beth actually pulled that quote out last night and she goes, this movie is like national treasure, but gone, <laughs> gone. What, what the, was the special, the, the R word for special R-word. needs. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Uh, and, and I could not agree with her more. Like that is such an apt phrasing because this movie is the best phrasing I can give you for this from my own, like my own terminology that the movie is, um, it feels both simultaneously neutered and anemic. There is, it is just like going <laughs> through motions to get somewhere. This is the, the, so the no genitals and thin blood. Yeah. Is that what I'm hearing? It's very bad. It's not a good situation. <laughs> But it like it, it seems like they neutered story to to put this movie out, which is also just again, it feels like a movie that is we're going through the motions. Now I actually I I I go back and forth on this Tom Holland thing. I like I seem to like him as a person, I think he, he comes across as a genuinely nice dude. He seems to have his head, you know, kind of on straight as an actor. I'm just so he's, he is incredibly milk toast to me. Like Hmm. he fits the Peter Parker aspect. And and we've talked about this and where, how I feel about that, where he's good. I like him. He's fine. Eh. But he's, that's what he's coming across to me as he's bland. He is not, interesting but then he can be you know you at you see him on the dancing show where he where he he, he goes full drag and he does the dance to whatever the hmm. song the, the lip sync and that was amazing like knowing that he is doing all of these stunts because we've seen so much video of him doing the stunts for spider-man and knowing that he is a dancer by trade he he is a gymnast like he does all of that stuff yeah, he slams into some stuff in this film. I, I remember seeing actually and thinking I didn't didn't care enough to look it up, but I, whether it was face replacement or not. But y- yeah, the, his face and probably body and self yeah. appear to be slamming into some things quite a bit on, on this I, movie. I have zero doubt about it. And it makes it makes those set pieces and moments that much more interesting, yeah. you know, because it's it's actually similar to the um the Tom Cruise thing. Like Tom Holland, I think follows that route where he's like, I can do all this stuff. I'll watch a Tom Cruise movie just to see him hurt himself. It was my favorite part of the last Mission Impossible movie outside of the thing with Henry Cavill when he broke his freaking ankle. That was great. 
huge fan. I was like, yes, break it, you <laughs> idiot. You're so dumb. I'm like, you're so stupid. I love it. Uh, and so Tom Holland, same thing. But he's, <laughs> he is... He is so like he is. He's just very milk toast to me and very bland. Uh, and and while I think that you know he that there's he's still young in his career. I I absolutely think he he can carry movies. It, that's not really it. But this is again going back to what I was saying at the at the beginning here. The movie feels like it is, and maybe this is actually the the, the best compliment to it it feels like the less the, the the it feels like the less interactive version of the video game that cut out a bunch of interesting story beats like the movie hmm. the hmm. movie is just again it's just so anemically moving forward it plods forward here like nathan drake is pickpocketing people now he's found by the guy who was watching him pickpocket people because his brother was pickpocketing people and also this and that and and now oh here's the other girl it's just such a like every moment of this movie felt like somebody had a a a, a clipboard with check boxes on it and went yep got it got it got it got it yeah i don't think anybody was going the extra mile like there were actually a few times where we talked recently about this with uh, unstoppable actually like none of that is even disqualifying really like we can watch movies where they're going through the motions and they somehow find enough to do that they still are interesting or yeah. i can still recommend them kind of in a way you know even if i'm like well it's this and this but yeah check it out but you know this at is this where... point i don't know if i'd be like this is this and this but check it out i'm just like well this is this and this and that's and... that's that's the anemia for me there is nothing there like you you bring up unstoppable and 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 there's meat to the bone right this is seriously like I have no doubt that that people who that that people like that the the dig uncharted might dig this movie. They might really like it. I didn't hate the movie. I I don't think it's a No, it's not hateable. <laughs> no, it's and and that's actually another yeah. thing. It's yeah. not hateable because it's nothing. It is like I've said this before about certain movies and I can't remember the first time I said it, but I know the the, the that this fits. <laughs> this movie is a fart in the wind, man. You know it happened. You can smell it, but then it's gone. <laughs> and you forget. So, okay. Well, you know what? Let, okay. And, and also, right. I do want to mention, <laughs> because I think that, that to a point, you're right. It does. Part of this, this feels like we've had this in development hell. We finally got a big star attached to it. We've got also Mark Wahlberg and Antonio Banderas. So that's something. Uh, let's get this out. And the, you know, the biggest issue is that that's just a disservice to Tom Holland and to the, the, to the title, you know, like, Oh well, yeah. I, I, I don't, which I mean... we, we know about. And, 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 but then this movie also, I wish I'm, I'm on one hand, I'm glad we don't get too deep into the box office numbers, but I am legitimately curious. I feel like this movie bombed uh, like in, for what it was, you know, I, I don't have that much faith in humanity, <laughs> uh, especially when it comes to video game movies. The thing you always talk about is like, why do they keep making them? And why are they always so bad? Well, because they're guaranteed to make money in a way, no matter how bad they are. So but, but, this being by far also not the worst video game movie probably made some money you know like but but did it like this is the same thing also with, post covid uh, and, and look morbius bombed at the box office too morbius was a big bomb i, well, I okay well this can only be solved by looking it up so really we're just never gonna know it was not morbin time is all i'm saying <laughs> it's not the summer of morbius uh okay <laughs> i kind of want to reset a little bit because there's at least four or five people out there. Actually, there's there's four or five people out there listening to this show. There's one <laughs> and a half people listen, like right now, saying, "Well, duh, you know, like what were you expecting necessarily?" And yeah, I didn't get anything I wasn't expecting. So I, I kind of want to reset to be like, "Yeah, that's true," but also these. You're trying not to keep it totally negative. I get it. I'm here for it. <laughs> 
Hey, well, there was actually some things I, I liked about the movie, too. So I could just straight up say those. Tell me one want. thing that you liked about this movie. Okay, so the, the action for the most part, we've already talked about how Holland is in some of the stunts and that makes a big deal and, and I like it. Uh, but for the most part, it's not really great action. Like the, there's a lot of it that's that's either running or jumping over small objects. It's funny because in thinking of other video game movies, you often think about Mortal Kombat. And one of the reasons that movie is is a little funny is because there is quite a bit of, of martial arts or action in there but some of it is like this, this these really strange like half cartwheels over like <laughs> why, really low why things does he, why does he do the jump twist thing for no reason where he's barely oh, jump like, twist i don't even care because it's like technically no 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 not like the backflip it's the one where he <laughs> he totally does the ha huh. Oh, it just rock. turns around in a circle. On, yes, stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, over a rock for no reason and barely puts any effort into it. But, but yes. where in that movie, it's it's charming and you love it. In this, it's like it's triple A and you're getting all the music and it's it's a high intensity scene. And he's, yeah, he's just kind of jumping over some things slowly <laughs> or he or she is or they're running after each other. So so, so most, most of the action is, is kind of that and that's not great. But... Uh, I did like two things that they ended up doing because he's a bartender and he's he does all the fancy things with the bottles and and stuff. Yeah, the t the Tom again Tom Cruise in cocktail. <laughs> Very good. Um, there is a fight that while it's immediately preceded by something stupid, I actually liked that they they come. Okay. You don't need to give all the backstory. It's the fight in the bar, right? <laughs> there, it's the moment where they go underground. And I didn't understand this at first, but my wife explained it. So I think it is understandable. I was, I just missed it or whatever. Uh, but they go underground. It's Chloe and Tom Holland, uh, Nathan Drake go underground while Mark Wahlberg stays up above and has to basically follow them up above. Mm -hmm. So while they're doing that, that's actually kind of interesting. And I think the ending where he has to do something to get them from drowning and all that stuff is, is, is cool. Like whatever. Uh, but yeah. there's a fight where they're underground. They, they come into a rave and they see some of the bad guys and it's that moment where they're like, hurry, kiss me, you know, like to, to blend in, but it's <laughs> hurry, dance with me. And then they do like a little close dance for like 10 seconds, I guess, as they move across the floor. I'm like, this is stupid. Uh, but then they get behind the bar and the bad guys see them and there's actually a fight where he's using some of those bar skills to yeah. to defend himself. It's a really small thing, but I actually ended up kind of liking that that fight. Sure, absolutely. I no, cool. I, I like that. I actually really liked uh I like the the what the 35 second fight he had with the Scottish guy uh where the Scottish guy is talking to him and he, and he keeps saying, "I don't know what you're saying." And there's a couple of like he has a couple of really cool little stunts where he's running along the wall and bouncing off a thing. And it was fun. Really enjoyed that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There was one other two. Oh, oh, on the on the. Okay. So towards the end of this film, they discover the treasure. It's on two Goonies boats, and they airlift the boats out. So the last you know, <laughs> twenty minutes of the movie is them fighting on helicopters that are towing boats in the air. So like flying boats, which was just ridiculous enough that I was like, okay, this is. <laughs> this is just stupid enough to be good. Like there, this is kind of all right. Uh, but there's a couple actual fights on that boat as well, while it's like going back and forth and hitting stuff, and all, that I thought were actually pretty well choreographed and, and came off pretty good. Fun. So, yeah, there's some fun to be had. Uh, I don't know if I have anything else. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about uh, a couple. Anything else things. I liked? Sorry, I got I got oh, other stuff yeah. I didn't like. If you <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, you basically hit on everything that I liked. I actually liked. Uh, I like the 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 woman playing Chloe. Yeah, I like her a lot. Sure, uh, the character, meh. But again, eh, all of the characters, the like, this is a they could have introduced anybody, and it wouldn't have mattered what the relationship was because the relationship doesn't matter. The whole movie is her saying Sully is a bad guy. Sully's not a good guy, and and here's okay, and and maybe this is a. I'm missing the trope. I didn't play the games. I didn't watch enough of it. Like I played chunks of them, but I never finished them. I, I actually don't like the way they play. So I didn't get into them. Um, Fair. But Sully kind of always came off to me more as a wry, but, but he was wry and, and likable. 
Wahlberg isn't likable in this movie. I mean, <laughs> generally ever, but in this movie, that character. I was just say, how much of that is just colored by Wahlberg? No, no, no. Because I actually, uh, I could talk about Four Brothers. I actually liked him in that. I like him in uh, the other guys. I, I don't like him as a True. person. I think he's a, I think he's whatever. Seems, seems kind of douchey. Yeah, big time. But but this is a case where at at no point, at any point, is he even remotely giving off like I could be a good guy and I'm tug I'm pulling your leg. The, the chemistry between him and Holland I don't think really hits. It's I don't think... non-existent. Yeah. And then the chemistry between him and Chloe, non-existent. That's true. Actually, yeah, why don't we just, any chemistry really, I'm not sure. The, no, uh, it's, it's again, and this all goes back to the anemic thing. And and, and the fi- I, I I'm struggling here because, again, I didn't hate this movie. This movie is just never going to be something. When I want to watch this movie, I will turn on National Treasure or I will turn on yes. Raiders yeah. of the Lost Ark. Uh, or Last Crusade, or literally any, and in they fact, name drop another movie that I can't even remember at this point. But yeah, it's the the what, in in this movie when they talk about Indiana Jones, like why at that point would you, wouldn't you just be like, wait, yeah, why am I not watching Indiana Jones right now? Right, right. <laughs> Which is it's it's that yeah, don't mention that. But I, I have to say that there that if I'm gonna watch again, if I'm gonna watch this movie. Uh, the mummy series with Brendan Fraser. And, and to, to that end, I would argue that if you want to watch an adventure thing that involves treasure hunting, dude, turn this off and go watch moon Knight. way, way better. And doing similar things all across this better in every respect. And I'm not, I'm not hearing. Don't let me hear this. Well, it's the MCU. They've got all this backstory. No, 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 no. Those movies and, t- and TV shows are not written in a, a, a total vacuum here. They're they're written by random people that get it call, called up and are interested. This movie has sat uh, uncharted for over a decade. They could have done better. And it's just, I think that the, the bummer for the movie is for all of the interesting set pieces and the fact that the movie starts with one of the only set pieces I am familiar with from the games <laughs> was mind blowing. Uh, but nothing, the other thing is no other part of that movie of, of uncharted ever matches that set piece. Like even the bit on the boats, that's not really as interesting as that opening piece to me. Like it was cool, but the whole like he crawling up the 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 the, the cargo nets yeah, yeah, sure. and and then the car and all that stuff was really fun and super interesting and then the movie just plods along again set piece to set piece that they can get to and even like <laughs> the 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 funny thing is you know we get to the point where you were talking about where uh where where Sully was above them and and they were downstairs mm-hmm. and this is once again done better in last crusade when they were under when they're under Vienna and they have to they end up light the fire on the uh on the on the the water above them because it's layered with oil and they're they're trying to find right same amount of time was spent and I I way more interested there than I ever could have been here like it's not they didn't even build that and that sequence, which again is built on their, tr- they can't do anything because they're in the water underneath. They're locked in and Sully has got to fight the girl who killed his brother, uh, Nathan who killed Drake's Dra- brother, Nathan Drake's yeah, same, brother yeah. who Sully hasn't then, told he's, about. He's still alive. Yeah. Uh, which yes. When, then we find out the, 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 the thing at the end that he's the still alive. Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's like they're simultaneously aware of the movies that they're inspired by. Yeah, or that came before them, uh, but don't know what to do with that at all. I mean, it, it's it almost seems like a lose lose because like they're not going to to supersede. Like I, I guess <laughs> I'm not sure what they're doing. I'm not sure they're sure what they're doing right there is the thing. They're like, yeah, right. like we want to remind them about the good movies that they liked in in this genre. But I don't know that that's doing them a service here necessarily. No. Even when they get some things right or interesting, they just don't have 
the the <laughs> they don't have the expertise like those things aren't good because they walk like that moment in indiana jones isn't good because it's in vienna because they walk like it's good because a million other things and and, and filmmaking and all and so it's <laughs> like they're they're trying to uh, reproduce or or again check off the boxes and maybe if they check off enough of them it'll be as good or close to as good or I, I don't know I don't think anybody's thinking about it that much that's the thing that no, nobody I, is is thinking about it that much at all I so. I can't I can't it, it, it that's how absolutely I I can't disagree it feels very much so like that and and again disappointing for a number of reasons that being one of them this yeah sure the games deserve better the actors deserve better why okay there was a they took the snakes why is it got to be snakes and they made it nuns why is it got to be nuns it got to be nuns is there am i missing something that's got to be from the game right because they very purposefully just replaced snakes with nuns oh i i just assume because of the beginning that the that he's been he and his brother were foster children and they were in the nunnery at the beginning but see that doesn't work that's i think that's my point is that if this isn't like a a thing from the game if this isn't a a a call service to the game there's no actual joke by just replacing the word snakes with nuns like there's no that doesn't make (laughs) you you, this is this is my favorite part of the show when when you've realized I have dug too far into this movie (laughs) and now I'm dumber for it. (laughs) Well, great. I hope I can pass uh, just a modicum of that along to, to our viewers. Uh, Anything else you want to say about uncharted? No. Okay. Well, (laughs) two stars. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> is that a little high <laughs> that's i'm just gonna leave that to the viewer to decide out of how many i don't know out of what and still too many okay <laughs> i've never done that before but i'm doing it now <laughs> all right so if you want to tell us uh two stars out of how many you can find us podcast at book club for movies.com or just book club for movies.com i think we still have a contact us page sitting around there or facebook and twitter and again patreon as always matt mm. <sighs> Have we done all of the movies now? What are we going to do next week? I do have a suggestion for next oh, week. That, that suggest will be, away. Yeah. Uh, how about the Jesse Plemons, uh, Jason Siegel vehicle that's on Netflix right now? Windfall. Windfall. I did. You mentioned that and I didn't know it existed. And I think it's queued up. So <laughs> absolutely. Are you kidding? Yeah. It's a Plemons. It's a Plemons for the ages. I guess we'll find out. I don't know. Have you seen it yet already? Uh, I'm halfway through it. Okay. All right. Is it a Plemons for the ages so far? I mean, he's definitely got some things going in in this movie. Excellent. Okay. All right. So come back next week for Windfall. Sounds like it's on Netflix if you want to check it out. Yes. Matt, we've got just plenty of time to talk about any number of other movies that we might have watched and want to talk about here now for the rest of the show. Do you have some? Um, well, I do have one that I am back and forth on wanting to talk about, or if I'm going to write about it. Perfect. Oh, Uh, okay. I see. Uh, but, but I think, I think I'm going to just, uh, talk to you about this. Um, because (laughs) I, now it sounds like therapy. I very rarely outright hate a movie. Like I, it's, it's really rare for me to just straight up. I hate that movie. Um, and all, a lot of times when, when I, when I'm going through the motions of figuring out where I fall, that doesn't really ever come up. Like it's, I, I, my cinema is cinema. And it's like, for, for me, I, I like, I think about all the things that went into it and, and all that stuff. And, and so I just some I have a hard time even wanting to hate a movie, regardless of who's in it, who directed it, whatever. The last movie I remember hating was, um, and I I do I straight up hate this movie, and I've watched it multiple times, and it's never gotten better for me. Um, movie you love, I hate Attack of the Block, <laughs> which I do think we've had we've talked about this. parts of that discussion before. Yeah, but I think the structure let's of the movie do it is, again because I, I, the, stru- I yeah. the structure of the movie is fine. The actors in the movie are fine. Uh, the concept behind it is great. I hate everything about the characters. I hate the fact that, uh, and I don't care that they're teenagers. Like that doesn't, that doesn't absolve them, especially John Boyega's character that at the start, 
they're they're mugging a woman and we obviously know they've been doing that repeatedly in their neighborhood and then we're supposed to push all that aside because the woman being mugged is like no 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 it's okay now cuz there's alien monsters we're all in trouble okay so that's what we're coming together on great i hate it i just it does not it doesn't work for me ever that does not land for me can, can i just just for attack the block cuz i won't have any comments about Go. how this relates to the next movie but yeah you're not wrong obviously and that's that's a huge part of the film is that the these gangster kids are kind of menaces you know the movie is supposed to be kind of a journey for them as well it's, it's, a, it's supposed to be a journey for both sides right the kids are supposed to be sure. coming around and kind of growing out of that because yeah they're doing it for stupid reasons they're just they're kids right and, and, but that's also one of the things is is the girl that gets mugged doesn't realize how much of a kid John Boyega is, you know, like when she enters his house at that point yeah. and she's like, Oh, you don't have any parents one, but also you're 14, I think is what it ends up being or something, something like, that. like that. Yeah, sure. So whether or not the movie succeeds in, in communicating that journey to you, I think obviously th that would be the failure to me. I, I go along with that it, because also there's that theme about, you know, attack the block. It's them coming together as a block, as a, as a, uh, yeah, sure. You know, so, so there is a journey to be had. It sounds like it doesn't work for you there no in that not movie. at all okay it, it, no and, and i i recognize that and again that's why i start with i don't care that they're kids that's irrelevant like they yeah sure they can grow up that's fine but they're <laughs> none of them are good at any point <laughs> and and then at the end of the movie i'm sorry i don't buy it i just i don't buy oh you know what weird aliens that's what changed us no I'm sorry that that's that is it, it seriously is like the 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 not only not only is it the weird aliens but then the white woman is is the one that made us change like we realize because no man I'm sorry the movie mm, the yeah movie, I mean I, yeah I've got to I'll tell you what I will rewatch it just to focus on that stuff because you're right if if the stuff I'm thinking about in my head because it's also a very slick movie like it, it's a, it's a very um it's it's Edgar Wrighty, and not just because it has Nick uh, Nick Frost in it, uh, in its, it's just really slick. Like it's it, it, absolutely the, the kids use a lot of slang. It's really good looking. Like it, yeah. a lot of the music uh, punctuates every every moment. Totally so is. I will watch it and pay more attention to that stuff that I think might matter with what you're saying because I am interested now if if Do it. that does any of the work. Because you're right. By the end, he is sacrificing himself for the group. Like. Where did that necessarily come from? Uh, so, right, yeah, and okay. yeah. and it's it's just I I no, it, the, the, that movie does not do it. It doesn't work for me, Fair. and uh, and and so I I do I hate that movie, and I hate it because of that. Like I want to, I really want to love that movie, and I just can't. Um, and again, I've seen it multiple times. I just won't watch it anymore. I just, I, it's Fair. just, it is Fair. on that list of <laughs> no, I'm not going to ever watch it. So come back next week for attack the block. <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. uh, there, there is a movie on Netflix right now that, uh, Beth put on just randomly, uh, called I care a lot and it's got Peter Dinklage in it. Um, he is one of the kind of supporting roles with uh, Diane Weist, but uh, it stars Rosamund Pike, who I genuinely love. Like I, lo yeah. I, I like her in everything I've, I see her in. Uh, Hot Fuzz was she in Hot Fuzz? She, uh, no, I think She's... she was in. Wasn't she in? Uh, She's in a Fox... movie with Simon Pegg. No, I can't. Like I'm. Yeah, Die Another Day. <laughs> fantastic film go ahead it's really something um no i mean she whatever uh i don't i don't know which one you're thinking she's great she, yeah we like her she, she she's was in jack reacher her. uh which was significantly less interesting than reacher the tv show fair uh but but in this movie i care a lot uh so the the premise of this movie is very cool she becomes uh she chooses to become a legal guardian for the elderly and is ostensibly robbing them blind so she's working with doctors to find what they refer to as cherries, which are, you know, the people that are, they're alone, but they've got a ton of money. They don't seem to have any communication externally with anybody. So they, they, they through loopholes work with the doctors uh, to 
to have letters written so that she can legally take guardianship. And she's done this for, you know, dozens upon dozens of people and is making money off of this. And she is working this as like with uh, the nursing homes and with the actual MDs. She's got a partner. She's got a full building full of employees, all this stuff. Great premise. Love it. Love this. So Diane Weiss shows up. Diane Weist is is then uh, taken in by her, uh, put into a, a, a facility. Like, okay. This has got love, a lot of promise. Yeah. Love just, it, loving this. Diane Weiss is going to get the upper hand. Maybe Di she's an action star. Like, uh, kind I don't know of. This is going. We do get we do get a moment where she she freaking gets up and tries to choke out Rosamund Pike. And oh, if man. there aren't a bunch of like orderlies near her, she she would have succeeded. It was pretty funny. Um. So so it's starting good. Okay. We're we're interested. Then Rosamund Pike, uh, because she's the legal guardian, what she's been doing with these, and we're actually the movie kicks off with a Macon Blair appearance, which I loved, <laughs> uh, nice. where he's uh, we're we're kind of in the future a little bit, um, and he is arguing in court that she is not a good person, that she has barred him from seeing her. Why would his mother not want to see him? Why would doctors tell her that? That doesn't make any sense. So. Uh, we get to the point now where she's going through Diane Weiss stuff because she's the legal guardian. Well, she doesn't need to be in the house anymore. So they go through and they start like counting out what she has there. What's it cost? She's, they put this house up for sale. Um, she, uh, she, uh, finds out that there is a safety deposit box. So she goes and checks that out. And in the deposit box, there's a book and inside the book is an envelope. And inside the envelope is a baggie of diamonds. And out of everything listed on her, like, like here's what's in the safety deposit box. That's not in there. So we find out that her son is Peter Dinklage, uh, that they are part of the Russian mob. They've been hiding. And uh, so it becomes this Russian mob against the legal system and this legal guardian. Hmm. And it starts going to a point where I'm like, all right, this is getting good, except what the movie has done has made me. And I, and I think pointedly, I hate Rosamund Pike. I want her to lose. Do you want her to actually get her comeuppance because of what she's doing to innocent elderly people. And you actually just don't even think about the fact that they're the Russian mob because we haven't heard about anything real bad that they have done in terms of this movie. So, yeah. It does. It sounds like they're setting up the Russian, like, like getting one over on the Russian mob better than taking advantage of old people. Right. Or, or how does that? Yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of how it's going. Right. So we get to a point where after some James Bondian stuff, a whole bunch of she's smart. She outsmarts literally the everybody. She ends up where basically she wasn't killed, even though he tried to have her killed. She survived because, of course, she did. Uh, the girlfriend survives because, of course, she does. They end up basically in the same situation where now she has him in the hospital and he's been injured and she's got legal guardianship over him and all she wants is money. Just pay me off and it'll be fine. And instead of paying her off and killing her or whatever, what have you, the movie then decides, no, you did this to my mom. This entire movie is me trying to kill you for my mother because you've taken her away and locked her up. You know what? Let's be partners. Oof. <laughs> I lost it. And that's how and, it ends? Well, it does end with there is a little bit of a retribution at the end where the very end of the movie is her coming out of a courtroom feeling like she won again and Macon Blair shows up and shoots her. Oh, so she dies. But 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 that is like an afterthought to me because this movie does the exact same thing Attack the Block does, except it's like the aliens went, no, why don't we hook up and kill everybody? And then they went, all right, bruv. Like, that's 
<laughs> the you dumbest have seen the movie. Okay, yeah. The dumbest thing in like, and I was so ang- I was so mad about it. You were. Like, That's it, what I feel like last we talked. I got some angry texts, but it sounds like this has only escalated in the time. I so. actually hate the movie. Like that that whole thing changes the entire movie for me, and I can't stand it. I hated it. Yeah, what is Be- the point of that ending? Really, I'm always curious when something like that happens. Like the the, I mean, it's a Deus Ex even though it doesn't feel like it solves necessarily anything you know that No the, this is it's very much so a the bad guys won the bad and they did because Dinklage isn't caught he's doing this this basically he he and her decide they're going to open up more um of of her business where where she where somebody sure. like her would take over and she's going to be the CEO of this business and they're going to do it across the country but she gets shot, but her girlfriend is still alive. Dinklage is still alive. Nothing changes. So, I mean, I if I guess when we came to the end of it, that was th- what we got out of it, that the movie is super cynical. And at the end of it, it's it's it doesn't matter even if you kill the person that's the smartest person doing this. Uh, somebody else is right behind them. But even then, that can't be it. Like, I feel like that's not that even that's not satisfying. Like, I, I'm really no. curious when stuff like that happens. Like, what was... What was the the artist's intent maybe with you know that sometimes can lessen the blow but even then by the end which it sounds like you're uh, something i heard you say is that it's a waste of time like why yeah. you know the, the exercise was. still needs to be worth the time by the and, end and and that was the thing that made me the, the the most angry was that i i invested into this and then i feel like all of that investment was wasted because nothing before happened May, it matters. None of it. The fact that that Peter Dinklage sends two, three guys into the care facility. They shoot people to get her out. The mother gets out. She's drugged to holy hell, and then is two feet away from the van, which Dinklage won't get out of because he's a mob boss, I guess, and won't let his driver get out. So nothing happens there uh the, and then and then the guy who is like his second in command just goes to jail and we don't hear from him again never comes up he at one point sends a lawyer then he gets mad at the lawyer because the lawyer can't do anything the lawyer disappears doesn't matter none of that happens. <laughs> okay, like okay, and right. then and then this is what kills again like, yeah, like when he finally he knows who she is so they kidnap her they take her into like it was some outdoor area with cars surrounding her very much like the walking dead when they're going to, you know, kill Glenn. Like, okay. And I'm like, all right, we're going to get something here at no point. Like she's not scared. So she's just, you're either going to kill me or you're not. There's no reason to be scared. There's nothing to be scared of because life is two things. You either going forward or you're dead. Uh, so whatever. I just want money. Pay me off. It's easy. Oh, there it is. That's, that's what the whole movie's about right there as, as witnessed by the ending, I guess. So I guess, are you it's, going for it? Or are you dead? She went for it, and she's dead. Oh, she's both. That's right. Yeah. It doesn't it still doesn't work? But it, it's just dumb. And then, <laughs> and then, and then the worst, the worst, you know, the worst part about it is that it turns into this. He, he, like he has. He, Dinklage does this great job being sinister, and and uh, and and Rosamund Pike does this great job being that character. And then the writing just takes a dump over everything it previously wrote about. Well, yeah, I was gonna say the. Okay, it's a it's a way back now, but I think when you started watching this movie, you were. I liked it. I was into it, man. I even said it was rather good. Oh yeah, it's just it's rather good. Okay, never mind. I thought there was more <laughs> to it, but yes, you liked it at first, and then hey, is this worse than Attack the Block? I don't know. I mean, I hate it because it's the most recent between the two, but I'll never watch Attack the Block again, so I don't. And I'll never watch this again, so I... I was going to say, so you might watch this again? No, you No, won't. no, no. I'll never watch this again. So no, same I'm... same exact yeah. bad... Okay, well, shoot. I thought I was going to get a little bit of a victory then. No, no, no. Right. It's 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 got that same issue. We're like, like again, and it... And, and it it follows the same thing that Attack the Block does, man. It's a slick movie. The actors are good. The look of it is good. The music they chose is good. They just don't land whatever they're trying to accomplish. Like, it, it they both fail on the same level for me for the same reasons. Because everybody is a bad person. Everybody. <laughs> the, the only person in the movie that has any, like, semblance is maybe Diane Weist. Because she's playing mom, but she also knows that her son is 
a gangster. She knows because because she gets loaded up on drugs because she's drugged out. And and at one point she does tell Rosamund Pike, Rosamund Pike is like, who are you? Tell me who you are. And she looks at her and and in this perfect way says, I'm the worst mistake you ever made. <laughs> That's so good. Well, and I, I mean, because I feel like you've you have to have seen movies before where you dislike every one of the characters in the film, but totally. still like the movie. I, I, I there are movies. Look, my favorite types of movies generally are the ones where the bad guys win. <laughs> See there. So I feel like there's more structural issues and like I said, storytelling issues with, no, there is. with what it, they're it, doing here. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's the problem is that you're not, they're not succeeding in making them even remotely likable to where I'm like, okay, I want them to succeed to become better or whatever. Like nothing is there. Okay. So, so you're almost looking for that uh, love to hate thing where, yeah, there's, there's bad guys out there and nobody's a likable character or nobody's a good character, but you can still kind of like them. And not even, some... it doesn't even have to be that it's it, it, but it's like, like Rob Roy. Okay. Is a great, is, is a great example. It's, it's maybe my favorite example of, of a, of a movie because I, I get a visceral, hateful reaction to Tim Roth. But man, he's amazing in that role. And and that's part of it. It doesn't do enough with it to make like those characters are not done. They don't do enough with those characters to make them good bad guys. You know, uh, like, yeah, I got you. It, it's almost the Negan thing, which I hate to say, because if, you know, he's not leaning, he ain't meaning. It ain't Negan. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay. I, hmm. Do you want two little documentaries? For, I do. for your list yeah uh, one of them i think i've mentioned already before and they're both actually kind of makeups for movies that we've done and i've th th this movie or documentary will end up on my list because of something we've done and had i done it correctly i probably would have talked about these on the rest of the show for the other thing um, one of them is ramen heads which if i had been doing my stuff we could have talked about after hero dreams of sushi it, it wants to be kind of the ramen counterpart of of hero but isn't quite like it's not as well made a hero is incredibly well made so that might not be saying much but it, it's just <laughs> a little overwritten as well like it wants oh. that like because hero is about sushi but it's about life you know like this wants to be about ramen but it's about life but in the end it's not quite it still ends up even looking maybe a little bit more commercial they, they spend some time on one of the the guys that that makes the ramen one of the uh, premier ramen makers in japan which is interesting but it, it's i feel like it takes away from maybe the actual message they're even-handed at least because they will go to some other like most of the people they go to are you know the top chefs in japan and they're like ramen is life and this and that and they do get you know pretty philosophical about it but then they also go to uh, you know these you feel like more uh, not urban. I don't even know what they would be. Maybe, maybe actually not urban. Actually, they go to maybe uh, the countryside vendors where ramen's not life. I've just been doing it for hundreds of years, and you know, <laughs> this is what. So like, it's life, but mm. it is. But they like one guy they talk to, and, and they're like, "What you know?" I forget the the question they ask. Like, "What does ramen represent to you?" or something like that. And his answer is, "What do you mean? What does it represent? It's freaking noodles or something like that." Is his, <laughs> you know, it's like so they're kind of even handed, and I think that is fun especially when the rest of it is very self-serious uh, it's still good especially if you like ramen like that's part of the reason i look this up is because i'm it's, you know if, if it's not sushi it's ramen for me you know sure especially as far as japanese food goes there's plenty to love like there's plenty of of ramen to look at and be like oh man i want ramen now you know just what i that. need so highly <laughs> recommended if, if you're looking for that uh, if you're looking for a movie uh, as well written or directed or shot as hero it's not quite but it's good. You know, ramen is great all times. It's a great winter food when it, when you're cold, you want to snuggle up next to the fire. And on it's a great. hot summer day, nothing better than a warm bowl of ramen. Sweat it out. Love Just it. steaming bowl. <laughs> Give it it's a steamy bowl, as they say. Give me that egg. It's my favorite part. The other one I would have watched after we did Flash Gordon because it's called Life After Flash. Life After Flash. Seen it? Yeah, yeah. We watched okay. it a long time ago. It is 
even more poorly made than Ramen Heads. It's not good. But it's, it is what it is. It's about life after Flash, mostly for Sam Jones, but also they get, I think, just about all of the other actors, the ones that are still alive. And the director, they do get. Uh, it's, they use some old footage. Also, a lot of it looks like they just went to different cons and got the guys. You know, they got some Sean Gunn in there standing in front of, uh, pretty sure it's a Guardians of the Galaxy poster or something like <laughs> sure, that. So yeah. There's quite a few of those. And a lot of Sam Jones stuff is at cons as well. But they do get some stuff with his family. And that stuff is interesting. Like uh, hearing yeah. the story about Sam Jones is, is pretty interesting. Hearing all the stories they tell is pretty interesting. But it is all over the place. Like there's no real... I remember uh, it wasn't structured well. It's not structured at all. I would yeah. argue even to some extent. <laughs> like they've done an okay job of keeping some like minded. In fact, that's probably an insult to the people who did make it. There are some like minded sections. It does okay. Uh, but it is just like I, I, you can't grasp onto any one again thing that the movie is necessarily trying to say other than Flash Gordon was a great movie and this is why and here's the people that did it, you know? So, yeah, it, no, it's, it, and, and that's whatever. I, I remember it's on, I think it's, if I remember correctly, it's streaming on Amazon. Amazon. That, yeah, that's yeah. where we watched it. And, uh, um, I, I remember that it drove Beth to, we went, we watched, cause we'd watched it, uh, Flash Gordon. Then we watched that. And then she, uh, she wanted to go on her weird seventies kick of, of things. So we ended up watching, um, Logan's run and sure. yeah. uh and then that was followed by the in the 80s we watched uh Bucker Bonsai. Oh okay. <laughs> top tier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's obviously if you like Flash Gordon, you should really watch this. Maybe even if you just like filmmaking, like it's fairly interesting from that point of view. And they get I tell you what, no, if you like people <laughs> cuz the one thing I will say about this movie for any of the issues that it might have it gets like all of the people that you would want to hear talk about Flash Gordon. Like Alex Ross is in there a fair amount, which was pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> obviously, all the stars they get. Richard Donner for like a one minute clip, maybe. It, it's very strange. Uh, they must have had more footage or, or they got that from something else. I don't know. Uh, but they get they got the people. The people that you want to hear from are in there and they're fairly, you know, known and big names, you know, not not just the stars from flash Gordon that are probably easy or easier to get than somebody like Richard Donner, but you know, they get Max von Cito. other. Yeah. They didn't yeah. get Max. Von He's Cito, not in there. Actually. Brian blessed. I think pops blessed in there, there a ton. He'll, yeah. you get the feeling he'll just talk forever if you let him. And he, he has some of the best stories and tells them in just about the best way, you know? Yeah. He's got the, the beautiful voice, man. He does. That big He's booming got voice. the beautiful voice. So check out those documentaries. That's all I got. Sweet. Yeah, don't check out I Care A Lot streaming on Netflix. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and you haven't watched Moonfall yet, I'm guessing? No, we have not watched oh. Moonfall yet. Okay. Otherwise, I would have heard about it. So we'll save that for next time. I could probably watch that before Thursday. Hey, no rush. <laughs> <laughs> so come back on Thursday for that and come back next week for... Windfall. Windfall. That's the problem with, with doing a show that lasts well over 30 minutes. By the end, you can't remember what you started with. So. <laughs> Where did we go from there? <laughs> See you next week. Bye. Bye.